Okay. I think we're all right. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks to the University of Iowa and to Farrell for all the work. Um, I observe from the program that our group is designated as the historians. Um, I uh, am eager to point out uh, that, for the record, I'm not a historian. Uh, it is accurate to say that I muck around some in cultural history, but that's not quite the same. I do so specifically in the area of the illustrated periodical. Uh, that's true in part because I'm an illustrator and I publish my own irregularly issued illustrated journal, but also because uh, a series of collections came into the possession of my university, unfortunately because I shot my mouth off about 20 years ago, uh, creating untold headaches for my library colleagues. Uh, today we create, we create, we uh, uh, collect archives, uh, collections, and artifacts associated with the history of American illustration, and in particular, we often get them from overwhelmed, overwhelmed families who are uh, trying to manage the legacies of someone who, uh, a member of that family whose stuff is in the garage, which is both a metaphorical and an actual place. Uh, I, I, I say that uh, because I'm often running into people in unexpected places who have exactly that problem. Uh, so if you do, you'd let me know. <laughs> um, uh, illustrated periodicals, like retail signage, uh, represent a cultural category that tends to foreclose serious thinking which is things that everyday folks love. Um, people have affection for old magazines and derelict neon. Some of that is attributable to nostalgia, of course, but style, clarity, and wit have something to do with it too. Mass market publishing was dominated by complexity, representing the interests of readers, advertisers, and editors, plus a diverse set of contributors. For this reason, periodicals are uh, thought to be a, have, have recently been concluded a worthy subject of study. Uh, in particular, an early article uh, by Latham and Scholes Modern culture was created from a still obscure alchemy of commercial and aesthetic impulses and processes. If we really wish to know the past and not just a few monuments, monuments preserved from it, we must study the way that art and commodity culture influenced each other. Uh, Latham and Scholes argue that uh, studying magazines will get us there. Um, and, and they do. As old issues pile up uh, in storage, they capture the passage of time in striking ways, a succession of visual styles, shifting social mores, waves of personal care products, and the smell of old paper. Taken together, they bring us core samples from an ancient seabed. Uh, We'll return to the pre this, this theme of time presently, but back to the alchemy of commercial and aesthetic impulses. If you know anything about the history of printing, and especially printed images, you would add a third factor, which would be technological innovation, specifically, especially at the beginning of the 19th century, end of the 18th, and accelerating since. All of which, to return to James Wine's umbrella from last evening, lives under the larger issue of communication. The primacy of drawing as an ancestral activity, but also an activity universally practiced by all humans, uh, which brings us to retail signage. 
Um, I, I, I'm going to show you uh, photographs and also drawings, um, a, a series of which all are photographs I've taken uh, in the field. This particular sign uh, is in Waterloo, Iowa. And uh, captures that elemental drawing vocabulary, both in terms of the designation of the formats, but the, the circular form in Mominick's circle. Um, vaguely Christological, I suspect. <clears throat> These, the, this approach to drawing is, a, is not about the creation of illusions, but rather symbolic communication a la Pictionary, and as I su have suggested, it's an ancient human activity. Um, this is a Fremont petroglyph in Nine Mile Canyon, Utah. We see comparable things in signage. Uh, the, in the, the word image relationship can be fascinating. Here, we get men and boys shop. There's no mention of a hat, but a hat appears. In other cases, the word and the image double. This is my favorite. That's a ridiculous drawing. It's just a rectangle with a couple of lumps on the bottom <laughs> to tell us they're wheels. <clears throat> In other cases, uh, we go all the way to something that feels like an illustration the, that hovering racetrack-like form of the silver butter steak. This is in Minneapolis. And then, in other cases, the word image relationship is more curious. Uh, this is in suburban St. Louis, uh, somewhat near the airport. Um, but the relationship between the girl, the majorette, and the language isn't terribly clear. But um, last, uh, back to this notion of, and thinking about the, the slide earlier of the evolution from the ox to the A, the, one of the things that's interesting about this kind of representation is that the mechanics of the representation are present. The lines of the neon are, uh, are, are manifested as opposed to, for example, the pixels in moving signage where the carpentry of the image is disguised. Here, the carpentry of, image of the image is manifest from the beginning. This, uh, that Baker sign on the right is from St. Louis. Uh, this sign might be destroyed in the next 24 hours. This is north of Tampa. It's not in very good shape as it stands. Letter form. And the letter form as a, as a visual uh, emphatically visual thing is part of what uh, drove certain themes in modernism. Uh, so back to the, this is a kind of Franco-American version of modernism. This is a Gerald Murphy painting from 1924. Uh, Murphy being one of the American expatriates in France. Um, and uh, the modernists were fascinated by the flatness and also the use of spot color um, as an approach to uh, to color usage and which of course is dominant in signage um, here I guess I'm I'm looking to focus your attention on the fact that these forms are being managed in a given Format. There's a figure field relationship that's being solved in, in real space. This is uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. Uh, on the way to the Grand Canyon for a trip that didn't work out. We got snowed out. Uh, 
uh, Denver. Okay. Um, so, and, and here the use of the, the, even in a totally vernacular amateur setting, look at the awareness of spacing and form. These, uh, the, 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 the sign painter tradition uh, uh, comes this is, a, this is a Paris manual from the 1860s. Something a little rougher. That's in Alabama. Cincinnati. New York. Again, think about how, how um, common these things are and how good and aware that that kind of workmanlike designerly tradition is. A little less aware. That's in Shanghai and Nanjing Road. This is one of my all-time favorite signs, the association of a cocktail with pancakes. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, this, this is in Denver. Now, compare that to this. This is a much more contemporary uh, development in signage, and it is entirely attributable, attributable to digital production. If you look at the letter forms in Sig Lick, you will notice that the vertical ascenders are thinner than the horizontal bars. Why should that be true? In a more exaggerated version. Um, it's because that type was handled as pixelated form and squished. This is as, I think this is a, a, an altogether new form of idiocy and ugliness. The relationship between those forms and the, and the format they occupy. It is more interesting and there's not nearly enough time to explore this idea. It, this in an incremental way represents, in the same way that the new signage in Vegas does, the colonization of the symbol by the image. The encroachment of pixels on uh, symbolic forms. And uh, another kind of negotiated settlement that's particularly contemporary and quite ghastly. Okay, I'm gonna fly here. Um, the materiality of these signs is part of their appeal and the, sh and the shifts across regime, uh, uh, material regimes. You used to see these formed plastic letters, now you really don't. And also, the sign begins to turn into a character as letters wink out. Time works differently. These things age in place, to use the term of contemporary elder care. Unlike print matters. The crack allure on the, on the front of that sign. And then the promises that these signs represent that slowly fade. Failed adaptations. And disappointed expectations. 
in 2008, you started to see signs like this, gutted, lot, their, their symbolic form uh, removed. <clears throat> the compensations promised by faith, even in its oddest forms, as in this seemingly Star Trek uh, episode forms. And then the blandishments of commercial public life itself. Not just any steakhouse, but the best steakhouse. The promises of success perhaps only glimpsed. Possibly the, the we we might thread the needle. Maybe Santa really will come. <laughs>